Pray, we go back to the role of the director in the boxer. Um, Angus went through all the physical training and he, he got into the mind of a boxer world in the boxing camps and that. How, how did you as a director um, get into that character to, to get Angus to the, to the bones of the character that you wanted to portray within the piece? Mm. It's a good question again. Um, it's interesting. It, it would be the actor's job to kind of show, show isn't the right words, was to portray or express the characters they see it and feel it. And the best way I can put it is, I know Angus quite well, and therefore I know Angus in his, in his uh, personal relationship with me, how he is as a friend, his mannerisms, and his, how he carries himself. And then there's what he's portraying as this character, and there's a divide between those two. And so one of the things I would have kept an eye on were, Angus is a very warm, genuine human being, and he, th there's no one I know who doesn't think very highly of him. And, and I find whenever he enters into a scenario, the atmosphere is very positive and it's very strong, and you just feel better about yourself and about the world because <laughs> it's there. But we had to kind of not allow him to use any of those qualities as this character. Not that the character lacks warmth, but that anything that looked like Angus, my friend, we had to gradually steer him away from. What are his options when you take those things away? And I think we get into this whole thing of our social masks. What are the things, who are we to each person in our life? Who are we in a social situation? So if I'm very different with my family sitting at home than I am in a job interview, there's a very different kind of physicality, and we, I kind of kept an eye on that for him. Whenever I felt Angus coming through, we'd kind of dial that back. But because, I think it's okay to say this, the character speaks directly to the audience, he has a direct relationship with everyone in the audience, that we need that quality as well for those moments where the character cracks a joke to ease the tension, or cracks the joke because he wants to stall for time, or something else. So it's been lovely playing those things out. And if, if you strip away the essential kind of characteristics of who you are, and play that text, you're left with the character. The character starts to assert itself almost of its own accord. You just have to kind of get out of its way. But Angus also plays seven, eight, nine, ten other characters all as well. At the same time. All at the same time. <laughs> Look out for that. And, um, and the joy of that was this fighter. But we, we made a decision, I think it's okay to say this, but yeah. anyway, made a decision creatively that rather than we were going to show off Angus McAnally, the virtuoso actor, it's Dan Coyle Jr., the character, is playing these people. The same way we can all do impressions of our brothers and sisters and our family, it, the boxer still had to be there in these characters he was playing. So that even as a kind of a, uh, not a problem to be solved, but as a, as, a, as a journey to go on and figure out, was the real, I don't know, the good stuff when I got into directing and finding out how we would do that. And he just made great decisions. And I mean, I think it's, again, okay to say, the father character versus the son <laughs> character, the transformation is so, acute, it's so absolute that he raises in me, I get nervous and afraid, just when that father, car, I won't give it away, the father arrives and you go, oh god, right, here's this guy again, you know, and we forget that it's one guy, we chat about the characters like they yes. are different people and stuff, and you're almost giving notes to the characters he's playing rather than to the actors sitting opposite, you know, so it's, it's I think, but I'm boxing myself off here, but it is one of my favourite types of theatre, you're relating to the audience, it's short, it's only an hour, <laughs> so you've still got a night, you haven't given away your whole night, yeah. but what an hour it is, and it means you get a physical journey, an emotional journey, a spiritual journey, you get, you're get. you definitely gonna have to reflect on your own life, I think, during it and after it, and I think it's got universal themes there that affect everyone. If you're any way, have a family of any kind, it's for you, I think, you know? yeah. and there's lots of beautiful resonances through fathers, sons, mothers, daughters, boyfriends, girlfriends, all that stuff, um, so yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, um, final question for yourself. Just for the people that will be watching this, what's the fighter? What, 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 is, what, what is the hour going to be about? The hour is the preparation for this big comeback fight. It is it, the, the show itself takes place over the week of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, with Friday being fight night. Uh, and we take, take that the journey of that week um, through it with, with Dan Jr., uh, through the training um, and through the, the family struggles. Uh, and in terms of what you'll actually see on stage is effectively an hour long boxing workout with that monologue woven through it. It's, um, it is the most demanding show I've ever had to do. I, as I say, the show runs at just about an hour. And in that hour, I lose three pounds every time I do it. Um, so it's it's pretty physically demanding. So, um, like like Brian has said, it, it's short, but it's intense. It's kind of concentrated, distilled down as an experience, and uh, and it can be tough going for an audience too, because 
um, whilst there are a lot of laughs and a lot of good times there, uh, you know, those kind of tougher family issues are, are relevant for most people in the audience and it, and it can be kind of a lot to go through for people. So, I mean, my ambition is that at the end of the show you'll have had a great night, but you also might be a little bit exhausted by it. It's uh, even just, I, I know from audiences so far, just to watch that amount of physicality can be quite draining. The people going, geez, I was knackered just looking at you. Um, so it, it's, it's an intense experience. Um, but it's, I think, I think it's a great night out of the theatre. And particularly for people who don't go to the theatre much. Um, you see, the, I, I, may, I don't know if it's the, the sporting connection or what, I don't know, but you see in a way that shows like Alone It Stands brought in new audiences and Aikino brought in new audiences that wouldn't necessarily be traditional theatre audiences. This is the one show, if you've always been trying to drag that friend of yours or that husband of yours or whatever to the theatre and they never want to go because the theatre wouldn't be their thing, this is the one show that you can promise them they'll enjoy. Yeah. And worst case scenario, if they don't, it's only an hour they'll be off to the pub after that. <laughs> uh, and Brian, as the director of Fight Night, what's it all about? Ah, okay. <laughs> if Angus, we knew that. Angus has answered it so well, you know, but I, I think um, the best way I could put it is it's, it, as, as Angus said, the second one Angus said, if, if, if you don't go to the theatre, if you think it's not for you, and if, you, if, if there's people in your life you're always trying to get to go, this is the one I'd say. If you bring them along here, it opens the door to all kinds of other experiences because of, the best way I can put it is, the art of it is making it feel like this guy knows you and he's going to chat away to you about his life and he's going to seemingly effortlessly do these astonishing physical acts while this is going on and play all these different characters at the same time, you know? So for me, Fight Night is a fantastic experience as a human being. You're watching someone go through something to the point where it will have to affect a change in you. You'll either ring your father, your mother, or the ex, you'll ring someone and go, look, I've been thinking, I need to talk to you. You know, that's what it should provoke. It should provoke a change in some kind. And I think fundamentally, the world should be a better place for us having put this show on. And I think it is, even if it's a tiny, 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 tiny amount. That's the thing, and, and if I, the final word on it then, um, it's a cracking night out. Yeah.